Amen. Good morning, everyone. Glad to welcome all of you who are here in person. And those of you who are watching this online, uh, I was noticing some people had already checked in, and that's great. If you are watching us on Facebook and you want to check in and let us know where you're watching, that's always an encouragement to uh, our folks here that uh, help this to go out. And if you have it on your phone and can check in, that lets people know that we're uh, still here and still going. I had a, and, and as you might say, well, why should, wh wh so what? Why, I mean, what's that, what's the big deal? I mean, you're still going. Well, I'll just show you why, why I say that. There was a message that I received on the church answer machine to this week. And it was from a lady who was calling to find out if we were still operational. Serious, I mean, she was serious. If there was still a church, because she wanted to, to she lives far away, but she wanted to um, recommend our church to a friend who was moving in this area, and sh she wanted to make sure there was still a church here. I had done a funeral for that family back maybe three, four years ago, pre-pandemic, okay? And so she was ch checking. So that's why sometimes I know people think it's, it's, he sounds weird when he says, well, why, why wouldn't we be here? Well, we are by God's grace, and I'm thankful and very grateful. And I don't know about personally of any churches that closed, but I've heard that across the country, sadly, there were churches that closed down and stayed closed down and uh, are not going anymore. So we're very, I'm very grateful and thankful to God and for uh, his people that we can uh, keep on giving out his word. And uh, today's a great uh, time because we're, we're looking to get together uh, at the subject, Come to the Lord's Table. As the praise team comes to the platform right now, let me introduce the song uh, by telling you, first of all, that none of you will know this song, okay? I already know that. That I'll be surprised, somebody might, you know, you, maybe. But um, it's a hard song to sing. So now that I said nobody's going to know it, it's hard that you're, you're thinking, <laughs> not that I'm a minor, why would he ever pick such a song like that? Well, I picked it because the song is titled, Come to the Table. And the words are powerful. The words are fabulous. The words say everything that I would like to say about the Lord's invitation to people, all right? So don't feel badly if you can't sing it. Uh, do the best you can. The praise team, they learned it also. They, they're, they're, you know, they said, oh, we don't know that song. I said, it's okay. I'm going to tell everybody it's all right, even if you just look at the words, all right? But stand together and let's sing it with the sidewalk prophets. Come to the table. <laughs> Outside looking in, this is where grace begins. We were hungry, we were thirsty, with nothing left to give, or the shape that we were in. Just when all hope seemed lost, love opened the door. Take your place beside 
Thank you very much. You may be seated. Well, the first video that you saw was about hope. And this song is about the fact that the mercy and the grace of our Savior is Effective, effective for everyone. And I hope that um, you didn't let the fact that it was hard to sing stop you from getting the message, okay? Because here's, the, here's what I know from just being in commune services for the last 42 years. When we used to pass the, the, the trays, you know, pre-pandemic days, uh, people would often say to me, and I was, it was, I was shocked at first when this first started, how often this had happened. People would say to me, I guess you noticed that I didn't take communion this morning. Now, I don't know why they thought I noticed, okay? But they would say that. And then they would say, and at first I would say, oh, no, I didn't notice, but then I realized that, you know, they, they wanted to tell me anyway, so I just didn't say anything. And they'd say, I want to tell you why. I said, all right. And they would say, well, I didn't feel worthy. This, this has happened dozens of times. They would say, I didn't feel worthy. And I would say to them to try to help them understand the, the truth of the Bible. I would say, well, this might shock you to hear me say this, but I don't feel worthy either. See, we don't, we're not saved, we're not God's children because we're worthy. We're God's children because of God's grace, because by grace we're saved through faith, and it's not by ourselves, it's a gift from God. And when the Lord invites us to come to the table, not because we're worthy, but because we're forgiven because we're his children. Now, if a person's not a child of God through faith in Christ, then they really don't have the, the right to take communion, but that's not the issue. These were Christian people always who said they didn't feel worthy, see. And so I want everybody to understand that no one's worthy, all right? In fact, there's a, there's a cliched saying that the ground is level at the foot of the cross, and what that means is, that means that nobody deserves to be a Christian. We're not, 
You're not a Christian because you deserved it more than some murderer, some thief, some liar, or whatever else, all right? We're, if we're God's children, we're God's children not because we deserve it, but because of His mercy and His grace. Because all of us have sinned, haven't we, and come short of the glory of God. And there's none righteous, not one. Now, people need hope today, desperately. And that's why I so uh, dogmatically emphasize God's Word. Because the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, we, through the comfort of the Scriptures, can have hope. Through the comfort of the Scriptures. God gave us His Word. And further, Hebrews 6 says that we have this hope as an anchor for our souls, both sure and steadfast. So I would just strongly encourage you to get acquainted with God's Word. And if you, if you want to get the most benefit from it, what I do is I use a pen as I read, and I circle words so they stand out to me later. And I circle words like hope and faith. And I, I underline God's promises because God gave us many, many, many promises in His Word. The, the Apostle Peter called them exceedingly great and precious promises. But they don't do you any good if you don't know them or if you don't trust them, believe them, see. It's kind of like a check. A check is only good if you endorse it. Now, in today's modern technological age that we live in, you can endorse it and deposit it with your phone if you want to and know how, but still, you have to do something with it. It doesn't avail anything for you if you don't endorse it. So, let me just encourage you, take God's Word and believe it and know it, and the more you know it, the stronger your faith will be. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Well, that's enough of a sermonette for hope. So let's move on. I want to thank everybody for giving. I trust you noticed the new parking lot outside. Uh, numbers of people told me that they liked it. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> There's nothing I could do if you didn't like it. But, but the, the company did a good job, and uh, they, somebody noticed that they rounded off the edges so that, they, you know, lots. So thank the Lord. Thank all of you who gave. We had a couple of big gifts that put us over the top, and it was right in time, say, right in time because the company wanted to come last week and do that. And so... Uh, that's great. God provided the funds. And on Tuesday, the lines are going to be painted. Hopefully, nobody had a problem finding a parking space this morning without lines. Just, you could, you could have pretended it was snowing <laughs> and the snow covered the lines over, but we don't want to think about snow yet. Not unless you're Charlie Hollinger, right, who plows. He likes it. And Charlie needs our prayers. Uh, he's not quite well enough to be back yet. I called him yesterday. I said, how you feeling, Charlie? And he said, well, he said, I, I'm feeling better. He said, I was waiting to call you. He said, because I don't feel, I, he said, I don't feel best yet. He said, you know, like good, better, best. I said, yeah, I know that. He said, well, he said, I was, I feel you know, like I would like to come, but he said, I was afraid if I came for three hours, I might have a relapse and so on. I said, well, that's fine. Just, you know, you know, how long you need to recover. So I promised Charlie we'd keep him in our prayers, and uh, we're going to do that. I also need to pray for the Scamardello family. Uh, Tony and Pauline and David and Amber and all of them are, are sick at home, so keep them in your prayers as well. And uh, we're going to pray for the people who lost loved ones. I don't know what the, I don't know if they know even what the death rate is yet in Florida. The last number I saw, 
a day ago was 35, and, and uh, you know, I'm sure it's probably higher than that by now as they found more, more bodies. But we need to keep in prayer the people who have lost loved ones and also the people who lost their, uh, who lost their homes, you know, and that was their only dwelling. I, I thought about that as I was praying this weekend for these people. I can't even imagine, and, and we, none of us can, I don't think really, unless you've been through a fire. I, we can't, you can't imagine what it would be like uh, to have to not just go to a shelter for a night to get out of a storm, but when the storm's done, to get the news that you don't have a house anymore, that it's gone, it was washed away. And all your belongings were washed away. That, that happened to people. That happened to a lot of people. And they weren't all summer homes. So a lot of those retired people, a lot of people in, in uh, trailer parks and others lost everything. All right? Now, I know that stuff can be replaced. I understand all that. But just think about the emotional trauma of not having, you know, the place you lived in for the last 25 or 30 or 40 years, whatever, not having that to go to. And I think it can help you not only to have an appreciation for what we have ourselves, but to be empathetic and, and be in prayer for those people who have to, you know, start over. And uh, we want to remember all of them, of course. And I realize that there's tragedies everywhere. And that's why I'm thankful that I have an omnipotent, all-powerful God who uh, is able more than able to meet people's needs. If you have a prayer request for somebody that you know, concerned about, lift your hand right now, and I'll be glad to mention those to our Heavenly Father. Uh, I'm thankful that He knows and He cares. He knows what we need. He knows what our church needs, and uh, God will continue to supply all that we need according to His riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Heavenly Father, I do thank You that we can come to You and that we know that you are a perfect, loving Heavenly Father. None of us human beings are perfect, and none of us men are perfect fathers. And uh, yet, you are almighty, omnipotent, sinless, powerful. You're the perfect Father. I pray for people today maybe who have difficulty relating to you as a perfect father because maybe they didn't have such a good family background, perhaps. And so they struggle. Many people struggle. I would ask that you would show yourself strong on their behalf and help everyone to realize, regardless of our family heritage and background, that we can know that you are loving perfect Heavenly Father who loves us with an unconditional love, with amazing grace, with tremendous mercy, and that your mercies are new to us every day. I pray right now for those families that lost loved ones there in the storm there in Florida in recent days. I pray comfort for them. I pray that there would be nobody that would be lost and, and not able to be found, that they could, they could find everybody, dead or alive, that all would be accounted for. And we know that, that people need closure. So I pray for sympathy and uh, patience for people who maybe were not in any way impacted, help them. I thank you for the good reports of people who are helping neighbors and loved ones and strangers. I pray that would continue. And I pray for those who lost their homes and lost everything, that you would bring alongside of them many different agencies and resources to help them. Most of all, people need hope today not only people in Florida, but people right here in Pennsylvania. People need hope. Many people look at the economy, they look at things that are 
not going real well in the country and people get discouraged and downhearted and defeated, depressed. I thank you that our future does not depend upon the stock market, the economy. Thank you that our provision depends upon you, our Heavenly Father, and that you're able to provide food for us like you provided for the children of Israel in the wilderness. And that no matter what happens in the economy, whether there's a recession or a depression or whatever, that you are able to provide for our needs. So help us to trust you and not be fearful, not fret. I do pray for those situations represented by all the hands raised. We know that the needs are vast and diverse. I pray for those that need healing, those that are suffering with mental health issues. We know that that's rampant right now in our country and in the world. So I pray that you would provide help for those people, healing, grace. Those who are battling cancer and COVID and other illnesses, diseases. I pray for Charlie Hollinger that you would touch him and make him completely well and raise him up, bring him back to us. We pray for the Scamardellas, that you would heal them all, raise them up. I pray for those families that are needing money. They need finances. They don't have enough money to pay their rent, to pay their heat bill. Provide for them. Provide jobs for people that need jobs. Provide whatever people need. And give each believer that raised their hand, give us the faith to, to know that you are working even though we don't always see it. Help us to trust you. And to keep our eyes on you. Thank you again for the promises of your word. Uh, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is fixed on you because we trust in you. So help us to keep our mind fixed and focused on you, not on the news, not on the country, not on what people are saying on Facebook or Twitter or some other social media platform. We thank you that you are in charge, you're in control. And one day you're going to bring it all to conclusion. One day you're gonna send your son Jesus back. We know when that's going to happen. That's gonna happen when the last soul is saved in the age of grace. So help us to endeavor to be busy about your business, the business of giving people the good news of the love of Jesus Christ in the gospel. And as we celebrate today and come to the Lord's table, help us to do that with thankful hearts. And I pray that in our testimony time at the close that there might be somebody that would share a meaningful word of testimony that could be an encouragement to somebody else. We know that oftentimes people think they're going through something alone. And so I ask that you would help people to know that they're not alone and that you've helped others through the same thing. I pray for the president, for the vice president, for the members of Congress. Pray for the Supreme Court. Pray for the governors, those elected officials, local, state and local officials. I pray that they would recognize that they're only in power because you let them be. They're, they're governing by your divine permission that you raise up and you put down officials. One day they will stand and give an account to you for how they governed. And so help us to pray for them regularly as your word instructs us to pray for kings and all that are in authority so we can live quiet and peaceable lives. 
I pray for all the tracks that were given out this past week. I thank you that more and more of our people are catching the vision of planting seed, sowing seed of God's Word. And so I pray that all those seeds that were sown this past week, that they would bring forth fruit and that people would read your Word on the track and they would receive that hope that comes from the Word of God. Thank you for people who are inviting their friends to church and for the privilege of being open and giving out the gospel, the good news of the Word of God. I pray for the men and women in the military. Watch over them and keep them safe. Bring them home safely to their families. And I pray for the men and women in law enforcement. You would keep them safe. Provide wisdom to them and protection, guidance. Now, Father, I ask that in the quietness of these moments that your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts through your word. Help me to speak those words that you want spoken so that folks today could be lifted up we know that your word convicts us, it encourages us, it can help us, can heal us, if we will heed it. So help us to take it and meditate upon it and do it so we can reap the blessing. Again, I thank you for the parking lot being done. Thank you for the supply of those funds, all the people who generously gave. We know that you're going to meet all the needs that this church has. Thank you that we can continue to support all of our missionaries. And so give us great encouragement as we seek to serve and follow you. And we'll give you praise and thanks and ask it all in the strong name of Jesus, our Savior, with thanksgiving. Amen. I invite you to take your Bibles and turn to the passage of Scripture that you find there in your bulletin. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And if you're watching at home and you want to partake of communion with us, at the close of the message... We're going to do that here, and uh, you can do that at home. You say, well, I don't have the proper grape juice and cracker. The Bible doesn't tell you what the proper juice and cracker is. Did you know that? It doesn't. We know what they used in the Bible, but it doesn't say that's what you have to use. So you can use any juice and any bread or cracker that you have because it is only a symbol of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, his sacrifice for us. We're looking at the subject, come to the Lord's table. Big idea. The Lord's table is open for everyone who wants to come. The Lord's table is open. And that's why we chose that song, Come to the Table. Everyone's welcome to come. Let's say that together out loud two times, please, all right? Let's say it with me out loud. The Lord's table is open for everyone who wants to come. Say it again. The Lord's table is open for everyone who wants to come. Now, in case you're wondering where we get that phrase, you might as well look and mark it in your Bible. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I'm not going to read that whole passage this morning, but I'll, I'm going to show you the phrase. In 1 Corinthians 10... 16 through 22, the Apostle Paul talks about this, and in verse 21, 
He's talking about communion, also called the Lord's Supper. But notice he says, you can't drink the cup of the Lord's and the cup of demons. You can't partake of the Lord's table. There it is, verse 21. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. The Lord's table, the communion table, the Lord's Supper. Special occasions are often connected with food, aren't they? Thanksgiving, Christmas, anniversaries, birthdays. Whenever there's a, a special occasion, oftentimes we have a meal. And whenever there's a special meal, we can't wait to get the invitation from the person in charge. Now, how did your mother, if you want to hearken back, how did your mother invite you tell you, however you wish to characterize it, to come and eat. How did she tell you? What did she say? Anybody? Dinner's on the table. What else? What? Kumasa. What's that mean? Come to eat, all right? What was it? Come eat. Guess what my mom used to would say? It's time to sit up. <laughs> yeah. Sit up. Now, and, and she had nothing to do with my posture, okay? That was before, that was when I was going to be outside playing. Billy, it's time to sit up. And I just knew that was mom's way of telling me it was time to eat, right? Supper's on. Well, Jesus Christ has set the table. And by the way, this is neat, a neat thought for you. Not only is communion, the Lord's Supper, the Lord's Table, one that we can come to regularly here on this earth, but did you know that there is a table that is going to be prepared in heaven? It's called the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. Wow, that's going to be some banquet. I mean, that's <laughs> that's going to be a, a lollapalooza of a banquet. But this morning, Jesus Christ has figuratively, metaphorically, okay, set the table. And he invites people to come to my table. So the, the $64,000 question is, if we're going to do that, how should we come to the Lord's table, the Lord's Supper? All right, let's quickly go down through this. So we're gonna, then we're going to do it. And then we're going to give you a chance to share a word of testimony or praise. How should we come? And by the way, in your bulletin, you find an outline. And uh, I shared the outline from the U version on Facebook this week. And uh, that's, a great, that's a great tool. Because when you share it, if people click on it, it takes them right to the digital version of the bulletin. And they also can access right there the... YouTube video about how to have a guaranteed reservation to heaven. So I'll be doing that every week. Come with clean hands. See, that, and that's interesting too about eating, isn't it? Because my, my mama always would say, Billy, wash your hands, right? Wash your hands. It's time to sit up. And that's kind of interesting that that's what the Bible says. Psalm 24, 3. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands and a pure heart. See, you don't work in the garden or garage and then come inside, sit down and eat dinner. You wash up first. And that's why in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-eight, 28, the Bible says, let a man examine himself. Now, watch this. The Bible says, let a person examine himself. The word man in the Bible is generic. It means human being, okay? Now, here's what it does not mean. It does not mean you examine your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife. <laughs> See, that's what we often do. That's what we're guilty of. They say, oh, but that person better not take communion. 
I hope that person confesses their sin. They got a bunch. You missed it. You missed it. Sorry. The Apostle Paul says to us, each one, when you come to communion to the Lord's table, examine yourself. Nobody else. And if you want a good scripture for that, Psalm 139, 23 and 24 says this, search me. Here's a good way that I examine myself, all right? Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Show me any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. See, it's all me. Search me. Show me. And the good news, of course, is 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when we examine ourselves, we may see something that needs to be confessed and cleaned up. And, and, and the good news is when we come to Jesus with remorse and repentance, we find forgiveness, restoration, and an invitation to his table. Some people get so burdened by their sins, instead of asking their forgiveness, they figure they're unworthy to participate. They pass by the Lord's table. Now, here's what you need to know. Satan is the one who wants to make you think you're not worthy, but God says you are. Satan is the one who wants to make Christian people feel like they're not worthy. Satan does. God says you are. In fact, I don't have time to go to the passage now to unfold it for you, but Ephesians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul says that we are accepted in the beloved. What that means is because of Jesus, we're accepted. See? Because God gives you and me the righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says this, God made him who never sinned. Who's that? Jesus, to become sin for us. You know where he did that? On the cross. So we might be made, watch, the righteousness of God, watch, in him. You say, well, how's that happen? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, all things become new. So that's it. When you come to Jesus Christ and let him forgive your sin and cleanse your heart and become your personal Lord and Savior, God says he places you in Christ. And instead of seeing your sin, he sees his son, Jesus Christ. He sees you in the righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ. By the way, that's what the word, big word, justified means. What's it mean to be justified? Here's what it means. Just as if I'd never sinned. Yeah, God sees me just as if I'd never sinned. Not because of me, because of him, see. So none of us are worthy. But if we've trusted Jesus Christ as our Savior, we're eligible, not because of us, but because of him. He invites and authorizes us to come to his table. Number two, not only come with clean hands, but come with a good appetite. Now, we're talking, again, spiritually speaking here. What would happen if you were invited to someone's house for dinner? And on your way to the dinner, you ate a bag of chips, a Coke, and a package of Twinkies. Well, probably, unless you've got a ginormous stomach, after all that junk food, you wouldn't be having an appetite for the good food that they were going to give you, would you? See? God offers us good spiritual food. A first-class meal. The, the bread in the cup won't fill us up physically, but they satisfy our spiritual hunger. But if we stuff ourselves with the junk food of sin, we lose our appetite for the banquet God's prepared for us. That's why... You need Psalm 34, 8. Psalmist says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. 
Blessed is the man who trusts in him. By the way, the word blessed in the Bible means happy. You want to know where happiness comes from? It comes from trusting in the Lord. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There's no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. We need to taste and see the satisfying goodness of the Lord. Now, I told you that the, the juice is not specified in the Bible. We know they use the fruit of the vine. And here's an interesting little piece of trivia. Dr. Leroy Creasy of Cornell University has identified a chemical in grapes that reduces the risk of heart disease. He reports in the Journal of Applied Cardiology that grape juice lowers cholesterol and cleanses the heart of life-threatening impurities. At the Lord's table, of course, the grape juice represents the blood of Jesus Christ. You know what 1 John 1, 7 says? The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, watch, cleanses us from all sin. All sin. Now, you and I are in the world, but we don't have to be of the world. We're exposed to sin, but we can resist temptation. See, when your perspective is fixed on temporal things, then you can get caught up in that, and that doesn't have any lasting value. That's why Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they'll be filled. What does he mean when he says we'll be filled? Well, a lot of people live their lives on empty. They go day to day without much purpose or meaning. When they reach the end, they wonder what the point was in living. They're starving spiritually. How much different to know that God loves us individually, has a special plan for your life. The Lord Jesus Christ can fill our days with a sense of significance and satisfaction if we come with a good appetite. Number three, come expecting to enjoy the fellowship. When you're dining, you need time to enjoy the moment. There's a fast food restaurant in New Jersey. It's called Eat It and Beat It. Yeah, real fast. And I'm told that the chairs in, in, in restaurants have been, you know, made now, especially recently, in recent days, they redesigned McDonald's and Burger King so people won't get too comfortable. That's why you got all those, yeah. Again, they, they want you to come in, you know. He didn't beat it. Yeah, they don't, they don't say that, but that's it. See? Now, in Europe, however, in Europe, when you sit at a table, it's yours for as long as you wish. You sit down for lunch. You can linger the whole afternoon if you like. No one's urging you to go. American tourists complain often that European waiters keep a low profile. Here's why. The reason is they don't want to appear to be rushing their customers. Boy, wouldn't that be refreshing, change? <laughs> Sometimes we're in such a hurry we don't enjoy our food. We inhale it and rush on to something else. When you partake in the Lord's Supper, we need to savor the moment, to linger and reflect and remember. The word translated communion it's a Greek word koinonia. It means fellowship or sharing. When we come to the Lord's table, spiritual food should be the focus of why we're here. Number four, we need to come in harmony. Psalm 133, 1, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to live together in unity. Ephesians 4, 1 and 3 says, walk worthy of your calling as a believer and work at keeping the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And here in 1 Corinthians 10, 17, Paul says that we are one body, we partake of one bread. So that's where I get the word harmony. Harmony at the meal table is important. Now, sadly, many families to get today, when they get together for meals, in fact, this is a huge problem when people talk about Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners, you know why? Because 
It's divisive. People want to argue about whose political party is right or who's right about COVID and the vaccines and all that junk. What's that got to do with the price of tea in China? What's that have to do with anything spiritual? I'll tell you what it has to do with anything spiritual. Zippo, zero, nada, zip. See, the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. And what you and I need to understand is this. There is no way that you are ever going to agree with everybody else in the church about everything. That's not possible because we're all imperfect human beings. But here's a, here's a new thought for some of you. Guess what the Christians in Africa think about Democrats and Republicans? Nothing! Zero! You know why? Because Christianity has nothing to do with politics. Now, I understand that people, you know, people make their arguments. I got all that. But what I want to know is this. When a person dies and stands before God, what's, what is he going to say? He's not going to ask him what political party they were in. He's not even going to ask him if they voted. He's going to ask, what did you do with my son, Jesus Christ? Now, there's nothing wrong with voting. Don't misunderstand me. Don't go getting all bent out of shape. So you don't like what I'm shooting in your hole, okay? Go ahead and vote, all right? Go ahead. That's fine. But don't bring it into church and divide yourself against some other brother or sister who doesn't agree with you. It doesn't matter. Let it go. Come in unity. And it's very interesting. Back up one slide to that scripture. I want to show you something. The Apostle Paul said, now, now watch this. Back, back up some more. I want to go to the Ephesians chapter 4. Okay, now watch this. In Ephesians 4, in fact, if you have your hard copy Bible here, you might want to go to there. He says, work at, and King James says, endeavor to keep. Okay, but my point that I want to make to you is this. We are to work at keeping the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Do you see the word keep? You know what that means? You know what that implies? That implies that you already have it. It doesn't mean you have to get it. It means you have to maintain it. And you know what the unity is based around? The Holy Spirit, the bond of peace, Jesus Christ. It's all spiritual. It's all spiritual. Keep the unity of the Spirit. Come in harmony. Number five, come with gratitude for Jesus Christ's provision. Number five, come with gratitude for Jesus Christ's provision. You see, this meal that Jesus prepared for us is free for you and me, but it cost Jesus his life, didn't it? God provided manna, miraculous food for the children of Israel in the wilderness. And all they did was what? Complain. We need to appreciate the cost of this meal. It's free for you and me. It cost Jesus his life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6, 23. We should appreciate the sacrifice of our Savior. Otherwise, we miss the whole point of the table. Number six, finally, come with undivided loyalty to the Lord. 1 Corinthians 10, 22. What, do we dare arouse the Lord's jealousy or do we think we're stronger than he is? James 1 says, a double-minded man is unstable in all their ways. The Christians at Corinth were tempted to revert to the idolatry of their former lives. Now, we don't see overt pagan worship today, idol worship, but we, yes, we do. Idolatry is prevalent in our society. Let me give you a definition 
for idolatry. Here's what idolatry is, trusting anything for what God alone provides. That's idolatry. So you can make an idol out of your money, can't you? You can make an idol out of your job. You can make an idol out of your family. And again, I'm not saying those things are wrong, but you don't put them ahead of the Lord. See? And eating at the Lord's table means communing with Christ and identifying with His death. Our partaking of communion indicates that we are undivided in our commitment to Christ. He is our top priority. He has preeminence in our lives. As we come to the communion table, that cracker and juice reminds us, represents for us the Lord's body and blood. So we need to check and make sure that our loyalty and our allegiance to Him is undivided. If you don't know Him as your Savior, I invite you to trust Him as your Savior today. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes, please. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I'm going to invite you to do that today, right now. You say, how do I do that? Here's how. You do it by acknowledging your sin and accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The book of Romans chapter 10 says this, if you will confess with your mouth Jesus Christ as your Lord and believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead, you can be saved. Because with your heart you believe, with your mouth you say so. For whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so if you've never accepted Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross for yourself, do it right now. Just pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins. And I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life and forgive my sins. Make me your child. Help me now to live my life for you. Not be ashamed of you. Tell others what I've done here today. In Jesus' name I pray. With our heads still bowed and eyes still closed, if you prayed that prayer meant it, God heard you and saved you. I want to thank you for doing that. If you lift your hand right now, by that raised hand, you're saying, yes, I prayed to accept Jesus today as my Savior. If you're watching us online, just you can let us know. Send us an email or a text and tell me that you accepted Christ today. We'll be glad to help you to grow in your life in Christ. Father, I thank you for the privilege of giving out your word. As we prepare our hearts now to come together to the Lord's table, I pray that you'd help each one of us to have the right attitude to come with the right appetite, to come with clean hands and a pure heart as we allow you to speak to us through these elements that represent for us the body and blood of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Right before we partake of communion, I want you to watch very carefully this video and let the words speak to your heart. We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Yeah.
I trust that everybody has uh, one of the uh, communion cups. And uh, in fact, I didn't make arrangements for this, but I'm sure we can, we can make it happen. If anybody did not get one, you didn't know to pick one up, I'd be glad to have somebody bring it to you right now. If you'll raise your hand. Anybody need a communion cup? Did not get one? Okay. No, that's all right. Bill will bring one to you. Anybody else? We, we need one, Bill. Dory needs one. Anybody else? All right, you notice the instructions there on the bottom of the, uh, on, the on the thing. We're going to, first of all, partake of the cracker that represents uh, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in order to do that, you just take the tab on the bottom of the cup and peel it back, and a small little cracker comes out. And remember this, I told you, God doesn't care what we use to represent. It's a symbol, okay? And this symbol represents the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Bible, they use bread. They took a big loaf of bread, and they all just pulled chunks out of it, all right? It's not the item. It's what it stands for. Father, thank you for the body of Jesus Christ lifted up on the cross. given for us. And for your word, it gives us this great, great ordinance of communion, fellowship with Jesus. The Apostle Matthew said, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take eat. This is my body broken for you. Shall we partake together? All right, now we're going to take the juice, and you, to, to get the juice, you just take, of course, the same way. Be careful so you don't spill it on yourself. The, uh, the top tab, the Apostle Matthew says these words, Jesus then took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I'll not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Shall we partake together? Now there are, believe it or not, in the seat in front of you on the bottom, there is a cup holder. If you, we haven't used those in the past, but if you'd like to just put your cup there, you're welcome to do that. I'm going to ask Steve Alexander to take the microphone now. If you have a brief word of testimony that you'd like to share before the praise team comes and we sing our closing song, raise your hand, give your name, and then your testimony. Hi, my name's John Reed. Oh, of course. Uh, I want to thank the Lord for my salvation, first of all. Uh, I lived over uh, 20,000 some days plus. And in those days, I never had a day without food, never had a day without 
sheltered, never had a day without uh, clothing, always had medical care, um, a prayer. I want to thank the Lord for prayer. Um, I was trying to figure out how many prayer requests over the years. Uh, I, I went back and looked. It's impossible. Thousands and thousands of prayer requests have been answered. And even if you just ask God for forgiveness every day, right there, 365 a year. So uh, I just want to thank the Lord. He's, he's so great. And uh, I just uh, pray that uh, people would come to him and, and try to understand. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, John. Somebody else, just raise your hand. Steve will bring the microphone to you. Doesn't do you any good to testify if nobody can hear it. That's why we use a microphone, all right? Hello, my name is Alan Fluck. Uh, I just wanted to praise the Lord for the last month. Uh, there, every day is an amazing day with the, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we just thank you for the prayers and the power of prayers that we have. Thank you for this congregation and God's love that you can feel through this congregation. And we thank you for the prayers that the people give us. You know that myself and my wife, we've had uh, some very serious health issues. Uh, in this last month, the Lord gave me a new stent, which has helped my heart tremendously. Uh, my wife, her kidneys were failing. They were down, both of them combined were only 29%. So they were down to 29%, and through God's prayers and his faithfulness and his love for us, he brought them back up to 44% because we've suspended some medicine, and we've talked to some doctors. We continue uh, that fight, but I just thank you for his faithfulness. We thank you for this congregation, and with him, we have a secured victory in heaven. Amen. Amen. Somebody else, raise your hand. Steve will bring the microphone to you. Steve, over here. Susan. Just a side note, I'm, have, I, I'm a school bus driver, and I'm having a contest right now for the kids to guess what year I was born. I had one the other day that guessed 1900. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit more spry than that. <laughs> okay, Steve, poor guy. Um, I just want to... Uh, give him your name, please. Oh, I'm Susan. Um, this is about five years I've been in this church, close to five years. I don't know exactly. But um, when I got here, I was a wreck. Um, Tears of joy are in my eyes all the time because God has truly touched my heart. He's provided for me. He's loved me. And I'm just so much at peace with the Lord. And I want to take this time to, um, I know October is our month to appreciate our pastors. Um, I just wish everybody would take a minute in prayer for the um, the people in different countries that are struggling, that are, could lose, possibly lose their life for teaching people about God. I am so grateful for Pastor Bill and Pastor Artie for teaching me. And as long as I can walk, I'm gonna be here learning everything I can learn about the Lord. And I just wanna thank my church, my pastors, and God. Amen, thank you, Susan. All right, somebody else, or a testimony or praise you'd like to share. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, and your testimony oftentimes can be an encouragement to somebody else. Hi, I'm Dory, and uh, I just thank the Lord, too, for our church and Pastor Bill and all the people and all the different uh, classes that we have, the Awana group. Uh, we just uh, praise the Lord for each and every one, and uh, I also want to thank John Reed for all the books that he's been able to bring for us. They've Amen. been a real blessing to me and to others that I've given them to, and it's truly a blessing to be able to share God's word. And uh, I just pray 
that uh, until Jesus comes, that our pastor will be in good health to be able to be up here and give us the gospel. And I thank the Lord also for all the, the Christian pastors all over the world who are giving out the gospel and have a true desire to see people come to know him. And uh, like Susan said, I just praise God that he is the mighty God who is, uh, he's just awesome in everything that he does. And uh, I just praise him that he sent Jesus for me and for everyone. And it, uh, it just humbles you to know that no matter what, even if you were the only sinner, he still would have went to the cross. And I just praise him for all his love and his mercy. And uh, I just thank him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dory. Anyone else? Okay, back there. Hi, I'm Sandy Strine. Um, I just want to thank the Lord for the Iwana program. Um, this week I just found out that in Africa, uh, the Iwana program is permitted to um, have their program in public schools. That is awesome. Um, it'd be great if we could do that here in our country, but I'm thankful for the Good News Club because um, at least in this area, we can uh, have that program in the public schools, which teach the boys and girls the gospel of Christ. Amen. So um, I just praise God for that, and I just pray we can continue to do that. Um, thank you. Amen. I get the prayer request. I get text messages each week from John Evangelism Fellowship of Eastern PA because I've volunteered to be a prayer warrior for them. And here's a prayer request that they sent just this past week. They said, please pray for the Good News Clubs because while they're starting up in a lot of school districts, they're getting big pushback. The school staff doesn't want to allow it, even though it's under the law allowed, okay? In Pennsylvania, it's, it's allowed. Okay, release time classes are allowed, but there's school, school staff that don't want it, okay, in some places. Now, around here, thankfully, we have it at West Hanover Elementary School, but be, be in prayer that uh, the Good News Club teachers will be allowed to get in where they're entitled to be in, and that that door won't be shut. See, Satan, Satan doesn't want God's word going to children, okay, and uh, we need to know that. Anybody else have a word of testimony or praise? Yeah, I'm Bill, and I'd like to thank God for all the workers and all the people that do step up and serve this congregation because there's a lot of people behind the scenes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bill. Anyone else? I want to thank the Lord. I'm Sam. I want to thank the Lord for our new granddaughter. And uh, she's a little peanut, but uh, to see her mom and dad, how they have experienced a child in their home, it's uh, a blessing from the Lord. And uh, I thank the Lord that I sit here realizing, listening to John, that have a birthday coming up this this next week of uh, 43 years knowing the Lord. And <clears throat> I've not looked back one day, but uh, try to look ahead and uh, reach those things that God has for me and for us. I'm thankful to be a uh, part of this church. Uh, representing our Lord and the idea we have from our pastor and each other for reaching souls. That's what Jesus came to do. Amen. And uh, you may not think that you have anything to say, but one little word may be such a blessing for someone you run into that might be struggling and uh, just be open to God's leading and uh, his spirit's leading in your life to reach others and even the people in your own home and the people you meet that may be strangers but 
just keep on keeping on. Amen. Hey, let me share a good, a neat thing that happened. Um, I got a phone call from somebody who wanted directions to the church, okay? So I called them back, and it's been taken a couple weeks back and forth, but I finally talked to the lady, um, around, I think Thursday, t Wednesday or Thursday, and, and I gave her directions, and she said, you know, thank me. Then I said to her, how did you hear about our church? And this is what she said. She said, somebody gave me a pamphlet at the bank. I said, what bank was that? And she named the bank. Happens to be the bank that I, I go to, it doesn't matter. And I said, well, what was the pamphlet? Because I was trying to, you know, she said, I said, was it something that said a guaranteed reservation in heaven? She said, yeah, that's the one. She said it had the phone number on the, of the church on the back. See? So when you give out gospel tracts, and especially this one with a printing on the back, sometimes God will use it to help a person to find a church. So you never know, see, what the seed you plant, where it's going to end up and what, what fruit it's going to bring. Uh, if you're visiting with us today, I'm going to ask the praise team to come to the platform. Uh, if you're visiting today, I forgot to mention we have uh, welcome connection cards and uh, gift bags. If you've never filled out one of our connection cards, you can fill out one of these or you can fill out one of these. They're both, you know, connection cards. We also have the new prayer request cards. If any of our people want to fill out a prayer request and drop it in a plate back there, the offering plate, you can do that. And if you want it to be put on the e-bulletin, let me know that. And there's also a place here for you to, to mention uh, if you want to kept confidential. So please use those items. Uh, and don't forget, we have Wednesday now this week. We have everything back uh, going full steam. So we'll have Bible study Wednesday night. I'm going to explain to Wednesday night the doctrine of Christology. What is that? What in the world is Christology? What well, has to do with Jesus Christ? Everything about Jesus Christ. See? And that's going. To, I can't do that in one night, but I'm going to try. Okay. And I, I give you an overview. And then the next week we'll do the Holy Spirit. That's called pneumatology. All right. And I'm, I'm trying to give basic Bible doctrines, basic Bible beliefs that people have a have a handle on what the Bible says about that subject and why they believe what they do. Then on Thursday, we have the senior Bible study here at 1 o'clock. All right, let's stand together, please. We're going to sing a great song, um, Fill My Cup, Lord, and it references the woman at the well, John chapter 4. there are free books out in the lobby and every week there's no, there's more added okay so it's not you know it's not the same ones uh, so feel free to go by there take as many free books as you want and if you want to give them to people feel free to do, give that give them away
because that, that way you can be a blessing to somebody else, all right? And uh, don't forget to pick up some gospel tracks too. October is Halloween, and we have some Halloween tracks in the track rack out there. So if you want to get some to put in children's bags, uh, I'm sure that'd be good, all right? Let's close with prayer now, shall we? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not